So let's put these three rules that we have here to the use in a couple of examples. Uh, so the first one just asks for the derivative, nothing more. Okay? So what we have here is a function which is a sum of four terms. We have a cosine term, an exponential term, there's a power function, there's a constant. Um, so the first thing to realize is that when you're finding f prime, okay, what these rules are really telling you is that you should do the derivative term by term and the constant multiples are more or less placeholders. They stay put. So what you should really do is say f prime of x is 5 times. So in here we're going to put the derivative of cosine minus 7 times. And in here we're going to put the derivative of e to the x plus 4 times. And in here we're going to put the derivative of x to the 7. And finally, well, we have a constant at the end and we know that the derivative of any constant gives us zero. So now fill in the blanks. The derivative of cosine, we've seen that that's negative sine. The derivative of e to the x, we've seen that e to the x is its own derivative. And finally for x to the 7, we use the power rule. 7 comes down in front. Subtracting 1 from the exponent leaves us with x to the 6th. And if you wish, you can leave it like that. You don't necessarily have to simplify unless you're going to go on and do something with this derivative. If you want to, though, you can clean up our answer a little bit. Uh, 4 times 7 is 28x to the 6th. So it's as simple as that. Once you've learned uh, these basic derivatives of some of the elementary functions and these rules, we simply take the derivative term by term we leave the coefficients in place. Okay? So here's another example. Now in this one we want to approximate f of 3. Um, now we're going to do a tangent line approximation for this. So we have to decide um, where do we want to do the tangent line approximation. And of course the trouble with this one is, you know, well I can put in x equals 3 for, for that. I get 2 times 3, that's 6. I add 1, I get 7. The question is what do we do with sine of 3. We don't know a precise value for sine of 3. Um, but we do know a precise value for sine of pi. And pi is not that far off from 3. right? So sine of pi is 0. 3 is close to pi. So we expect sine of 3 probably fairly close to 0. Um, so as a first guess, we could say that f of 3 is probably around 7. But we can do a little bit better. right? Because we can say that f prime of x is going to be, so we take the derivative of sine, so we're going to go term by term. Derivative of sine is cosine plus 2 times the derivative of x, which is 1, plus 0. Okay? So now we calculate that f of pi is. 2 pi plus 1. We calculate that f prime of pi, right? So 2 pi plus 1 goes sine of pi is 0, 2 times pi plus 1. f prime of pi, cosine of pi is minus 1 plus 2 plus 0, so we get 1. Okay? So if we use a tangent line approximation, what we get is that f of, so f of x will be approximately f of pi plus f prime of pi times x minus pi. That's the general formula. So that means that f of 3 should be approximately um, f of pi, so 2 pi plus 1. f prime is just 1 times 3 minus pi. Okay? So what does that give me? Um, that gives me, so there's 2 pi minus pi. So I get um, pi plus 1 plus, so I get pi plus 4, which is around 7.14. Okay, so that gives us our approximation in this case, right? So it's a little bit better than 
than the very rough approximation of seven that we started with, right? The tangent line gives us this sort of first order correction um, to the very rough approximation. Um, if you wanted to do even better than that, um, later on, um, in, in later chapters, you'll learn about things like Taylor polynomials that allow you to add even more corrections to get greater accuracy. Uh, but for now, we're satisfied with tangent line approximation.